Hello viewers and welcome to yet another episode of Crime Watcher. My name is Elliot Kudzai Ganyani. The Zimbabwe Republic Police would like to clarify the issue regards the alleged and forced disappearance of a woman known as Mo Blessing Ali on the 24th of May 2022 in a case that has seen various allegations and insinuations, especially on social media platforms. Police investigations have revealed that Mo Blessing Ali her dog and a friend, Kirina Marioni, visited Chibanguza shopping center in Nyatime, Beatrice, to drink beer. At around 20 hundred hours, Pius Jamba, with more blessings, former boyfriend, approached the two and openly told more blessing that her dog irritated him. In an effort to attack the said dog, Jamba mistakenly used a catapult and struck more blessings' friend, that is Kirina Marioni. A scuffle ensued between the former lovers in full view of Kirina Marioni before Pius dragged more blessing into darkness where they disappeared. An assault report was filed against Pius Jamba at the police the following day by Kirina Marioni, who also reported more blessing Ali's disappearance. Further investigations also revealed that Pius Jamba is not a member of any political party as alleged by social media activists and politicians. Neither is there any link yet to associate Simbachi Sango to this case. It was also established that Pius Jamba accuses more blessing Ali of dumping him after he spent a lot of money on her. The Zimbabwe Republic Police urges the public and political activists to allow the current investigations to proceed smoothly without trying to take advantage of the differences between more blessing Ali and Pius Jamba to settle political scores or gain mileage. Meanwhile, the Zimbabwe Republic Police is working flat out to locate more blessing Ali and Pius Jamba. Moving to Manikaland, the Zimbabwe Republic Police has apprehended three people for smuggling over 55,000 litres of fuel. Three trucks were also impounded. We made a deployment in the early hours of the morning, which resulted in the arrest of three accused persons who had three fuel tankers, which uh, we had almost 58,706 litres, which has since been uh, seized by Zimra. The accused persons were taken to court, where they are currently on bail. I would want to thank the members of the public and urge them to continue supplying information which will assist the police. And at the same time, I would want to appeal to those who are still daring to continue carrying out smuggling activities along the border, that the long arm of the law will still catch up with them. Anyone involved in smuggling activities or syndicates will be apprehended. Still in Mani Kalenda, the Criminal Investigation Department have accounted for a thief who was into stealing solar panels and batteries. Twelve solar panels and five lithium batteries have since been recovered. He received information from a source indicating that there was a person who was in possession of some solar panels and lithium batteries that he wanted to sell. So we acted upon the information and they managed to apprehend the accused person into the recovery of the solar panels and five lithium batteries from him. The accused person led us to three places where he had stolen the panels and batteries together with two others who are still at large. That is two uh, clinics and a secondary school in the row set up. We would like to thank members of the public for working with us and giving us information that led to the government. Batteries and solar panels which were donated by the government. Moving to Chitungwiza, detectives are apprehended at Tinashe Nyangari, age 22, for theft of a motor vehicle, a crime which he committed in Bikita. Chinashe Nyangara was apprehended at a police checkpoint after stealing complainant Tirivanu Utete's red VW Polo vehicle, registration number 1037 in Pikita. The accused deceived the complainant into giving him the car keys, stating that he wanted to collect his wallet from the car. He then sped off with the vehicle. His arrest led to the recovery of the vehicle worth approximately 4,000 United States dollars. Investigations are still in progress. From that story, join us in the second segment.
Welcome to the second segment of Crime Watcher. The fight against illicit dealings in drugs and substances is a collective responsibility. The Zimbabwe Republic Police would like to thank members of the public who supplied information that led to the apprehension of Darlington Ruzeni and other three accomplices for illegal dealings in drugs and substances. CID drugs and narcotics detectives who were on night patrol received information to the effect that there was someone who was selling dangerous drugs at his place of residence in Udiro 5. A raid was conducted at the place of residence of this suspect and four accused persons were arrested in connection with this case. The four accused persons are Darlington Razani, aged 40, Libad Jarevashe, aged 25, Malvin Isa, aged 40, and Takunda Bodo, aged 20 years. Upon their arrest, a big sachet of crystal methamphetamine was also recovered on the table inside the accused person's house. Further searches were also conducted inside the accused person's motor vehicle, and various materials used to pack crystal methamphetamine were recovered. We would like to take this opportunity to warn members of the public that we will not fold hands and let those drug peddlers walk scot-free. Take this warning seriously. We are coming after you. Meanwhile, the Zimbabwe Republic Police uh, have accounted for two siblings, uh, that is Munyaradzi and Malvin Maotswa, for a murder case that occurred at Zindoga Business Centre Waterfalls in Harare. Centre Waterfalls received the case of murder which had occurred at Zindoga, a well-known business center, which is in our policing area. Police officers who were on net duty uh, went to Zindoga shopping center to attend the scene. When attending the scene, they discovered an okapi knife, which was used in the commission of the offense. It had blood stains, and the area on which it was recovered uh, was also uh, spotted with blood. They recovered the knife and took it to the police station. However, they went on to use their initiative and intelligence to detect, detect the accused person. Intelligence led to the detection of the two accused persons at the two different health centers, whose names are Miyaradzi Maozwa and Malvin Maozwa, who are resident in Waterfalls Policing Area. The accused persons have been taken to Mbare Magistrate Court and were remanded to 14 June 2022 and investigations are still continuing. We urge members of the public, be it at home or in public places, we should respect human life. We must act responsibly. When you are drinking beer and you, you feel like you've taken too much, you need to go back home and rest. Uh, let us respect the sanctity of human life. Moving on, following an upsurge in cases of artisanal miners who lose lives after being trapped in mining pizza, the Zimbabwe Republic Police has joined other stakeholders in educating these people on the dangers of such activities. We are worried with an increase in number of mining activities that are resulting in the death of illegal miners who are continuously doing illegal mining without proper registration. And we are working with the, with the Minister of Mines, uh, EMA, the traditional leaders in trying to deal with the situation. So we are appealing to the miners to register with the Minister of Mines so that they operate within the limits of the law. Anyone who will be found operating out of these requirements, they will be dealt with by the law. Pakupeza dambu tziko, ratiri kusanga na naro mwa na wedu wa kutsimbiri wa mumu goti, tiri kushanda zwa kanyanyi sisa, sema zimambo, taka batana newe ema, taka batana ne polisi yedu, taka batana newe ministry of mines, tiri kuita hoche koche, Members of the public are encouraged to visit the nearest Minister of Mines offices, get registered and also inquire on relevant information on how to extract minerals safely. On this week, as Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe, the topic has to do with reckless drivers. 
reckless driving is a traffic offense where a driver drives disregarding traffic laws, thereby causing road crashes and damage to property. As Traffic Safety Council, today we'll talk about reckless driving and types of reckless driving. Examples of reckless driving include distracted driving, the use of cell phones while driving, drinking and driving, aggressive driving, speeding, and street racing. Distracted driving is when a driver focuses on something else except driving. We encourage drivers to focus on the road instead of focusing on other things. This causes traffic congestion as well as road crashes. The second type of reckless driving is drinking while intoxicated with alcohol. It is not advisable for drivers to get behind the wheel while intoxicated. Alcohol reduces your reaction time and clouds your judgment, thereby increasing your risk of getting into a road crash. When you find yourself tailgating another driver, just know you are an aggressive driver. This is seen when a driver trails behind another driver in an unnecessarily closer manner. In the event of an emergency, if the car that you are following storms on emergency brakes, you have a high risk of hitting that car that you are following, thereby causing a road crash. In the event that another motorist has made a mistake in your presence, it is advisable that you do not engage in a verbal exchange or an altercation with that motorist. Another form of reckless driving is seen when a motorist does not respect road markings. This is when a motorist overtakes where there are continuous lines. It is prohibited for motorists to overtake where there are continuous lines. We want to advise the motoring public to avoid reckless driving as it is a punishable offense. Drivers are encouraged to obey road rules and traffic laws to maintain sanity on the roads. So that does it uh, for the second segment. Uh, please do not move an inch. Join us in the third and final segment. Welcome back. Please quest uh, to fight uh, sexual offenses uh, and uh, gender-based violence cases. Uh, got a poster in November 2021 uh, following a donation uh, of DNA, forensic science equipment, uh, by the European Union and the United Nations uh, through the Spotlight Initiative. A fortnight ago, a delegation from the European Union and the United Nations uh, toured the ZRP Forensic Science Laboratory to check uh, on the recently donated uh, modern equipment and appreciate its efficiency in accounting for criminals. The Deputy Commissioner General responsible for crime, Deputy Commissioner General Lorraine Chipato, welcomed the delegation on behalf of the Commissioner General of Police. 21st century policy demands that police organizations move with speed in adopting to modern technologies in order to remain relevant in discharging their mandate and the Zimbabwe Republic Police is not an exception. We are therefore grateful to the EU and United Nations through the Spotlight Initiative for capacitating the Zimbabwe Republic Police with modern forensic equipment. We are very keen and interested uh, to learn about um, how the Spotlight Initiative has been supporting the Zimbabwe Republic Police and indeed, you know, uh, visiting the, the DNA laboratory. Um, now, the Spotlight Initiative, of course, is a, is, is, um, is a large program and the idea behind the initiative is that it's trying to tackle the scourge of gender-based violence from different perspectives. So it's, it's holistic, it's looking at uh, various, it's, it's about educating people, it's about tackling harmful practices, it's about uh, offering support to the victims uh, in legal terms, in, in medicinal terms, in health terms, um, it's about uh, protecting victims. 
And it's also about uh, supporting uh, law enforcement of tackling uh, the gender-based violence uh, through various means. And the aspect of deterrence is also, of course, very important. Impunity for gender-based violence should not prevail, and that is the whole idea behind our support um, and, and for, the, for establishing this laboratory. In a different story, the culture week, which happened just over a week ago, saw various police departments join the rest of the world in celebrating the Zimbabwean culture. The Criminal Investigation Department Women Network was not to be outdone after they hosted a Culture Week event at CID headquarters in Harare. The event was also used to promote a responsible citizens who shun crime. It's of paramount importance to note that our country is currently facing a plethora of terrible crises which are attributed to cultural diversity and this need urgent attention. This includes sexual gender-based violence, early child marriages to mention but a few. We are here to unite our voices in order to speak even louder for the promotion of diversity. Indeed, the Zimbabwe Republic Police believes that respecting each other's beliefs and culture will create a better nation for all of us. Therefore, we need to use all tools or means at our disposal in order to reach more people so that no one is left behind. As the CID Drugs and Narcotics Department, we are here to appreciate our very own African beauty, where we are discouraging people, and mostly women, from the abuse of skin lighteners, body enlargening products, and also the use of sex enhancing medicines. The continued use of these products has a negative effect on our natural Africanness. These are some of the products which are used for body enlargement. This is a hip lift and a bust enlargement product. The continued use of these products such as the bust enlargement will lead to diseases such as breast cancer. These are some of the sex enhancing medicines and these are some of the skin lightening products which are being used to bleach our natural black skin especially by the women. Let's love our natural beauty. Remember, being black is beautiful. Being African is also beautiful. Let's preserve our natural beauty. Let's preserve our culture. The event also saw detectives from various departments compete for the best African dish and artifacts at display. In a case in Gweru, Mukoba police accounted for a serial thief. We spoke to the officer in charge, Mukoba, for a brief on this case. In our area of policing, we received a spate of cases of unlawful entry into premises and theft cases. We carried out investigations, and during the course of investigations, we managed to get a tip off from a member of the public through our police intelligence team. We were told that Lakson Chiwanza, a male adult aged 42 years, who resides in Mkoba for residential place, is a habitual criminal and is hiding some of the property that was stolen through unlawful entry and theft cases at Mukoba 4. We managed to pick the suspect and he led the police officers to recover property that include three 42-inch televisions, a deep freezer, a kitchen unit, two tools boxes, blankets, kitchen utensils, and a lot of electrical gadgets. The accused person was taken to court where he was convicted to 48 months effective. The estimated amount of recovered property is 1,600,000 RTGS. I want to appeal to members of the public to make sure that their houses are secured. They must always put locks and screen doors on their houses so that it becomes difficult for the criminals to gain entrance into the houses. Before we come to the end of this week's episode, here are some people who are on the police wanted list. Richawea July, age 29, of Musiwa Storo Village, Chief Mutumba Madziva is wanted by Madziva Police for a case of murder. Still with Madziva Police, Thomas Matemere, age 45, of Manyika Village, Chief Mutumba Madziva is wanted for a case of rape.
Lastly, Battlefields uh, Police is looking for Fortune Muyambo, age 20, of Kamoto, Compound C, Riketa, Battlefields, Kadoma, for a case of rape. Should you have information that may help in locating any of these wanted persons, uh, please feel free to visit or contact any nearest uh, police establishment. Uh, alternatively, you can also link with us on any of the following details. Uh, our national complaints text number is 0242 703 You can visit our website www.zrp.gov.zw. Email us on feedback at zrp.gov.zw. Alternatively, you can link with us on our Twitter handle at Please Zimbabwe or Facebook page Zimbabwe Republic Please. Should you fail to link with us on any of these details, you can also watch our Crime Watch episodes on our YouTube channel, Zimbabwe Republic, please. I must say thank you very much for being with us today. It really has been wonderful having you along. From I, Elliot Kudzai Ganyani. Until then, see you next time.